We are live. Hey, you guys. I hope you can all see me, hear me, touch me, feel me. You can't quite do that. We got to be socially distanced. But uh, I am, as we say in California, I'm really stoked to be here with you. That means really excited. Now, we've got uh, people from all over the place. If you would give me a roll call, I'd love to see where you're from. And thank you for joining us. Uh, we will definitely be taking questions at the end. I want to roll through some stuff to begin with. Uh, can you guys hear me? Somebody give me a shout and just let me know. <laughs> I want to make sure we are coming through loud and clear. You can see my video. You can hear my audio, all that kind of cool stuff. Okay. This is Mark Silver. If you don't know me, I'm a published photographer here in Carmel, California. And I want to talk to you about a bunch of different things. The first thing I want to talk about is how to stay grounded and focused, especially during our current crisis. But this is stuff you should be doing every single day, okay? I mean, this doesn't just happen during a moment of crisis. This is how you remain stable and focused as a creative. Okay, first thing, make sure you're getting out for walks. Okay, you've heard me say this probably if you've been watching my channel, you're reading my book, Create. I talk about it a lot. It's really important, and there's many reasons for it. Here's the main thing, and I want to just um, emphasize this. This is a section, this is a chapter out of my book here, <clears throat> um, which is from Thomas Jefferson. He said, the object of walking is to relax the mind. Relax the mind. That's the object. It's not about what your feet are doing. It's about what your mind is doing. And we all need some mental relaxation, right? So remember that. You're not just moving your feet around. You're actually, the object is to relax your mind. Divert your attention by the objects surrounding you. Walking is the very best possible exercise, and it is something you should do every day. Now, if for some reason you can't get out, uh, either for your own personal reasons or because there's a restriction, try to find something like that that will divert your attention, that will put your attention outward, not inward. And this is the thing. As photographers, we're always training our eyes to look and see. You've heard Bob Holmes say many people look, but they don't see. It's not just cutting hairs there. Bob, what Bob means is you, you've, you've got to see the photograph. And a lot of people walk past photographs that other people, you know, uh, that you as a photographer would capture, and all of a sudden there's something there, and other people just walk past it. That's kind of the art of photography right there in, in like one sentence is – really seeing the world around you and and framing it and putting it in the frame of your camera and capturing it and then passing along to others. Okay. By the way, I'm a one-man band here. This is a little new to me. So if I uh, fiddle around like I'm going to do right now, I just want to check everything and make sure that we're all – set here. I want to make sure our chat is set. It's giving me a little bit of a warning sign. So I want to make sure you guys are able to chat here. For some reason, it's saying unable to connect to chat. I'm not sure why that is. And I don't know if you guys are able to connect on your end. Um, we've got some thumbs up. So I'm assuming you guys are connected. Um, I got a message that's working. Is the chat working for you guys? Somebody enter something on the chat. So I just want to make sure I can hear your questions when they come up. But if everything else is working, I'm just going to keep going. So get out there for those walks. This is really, really important. Again, this is a daily routine thing. I take a walk every day. People that work with me know that. I mean, I am scheduled into my day. Um, 
So there is a 30 second delay. Okay, cool. Anyway, I get out every day, every afternoon with my golden retriever, Shiloh, who carries a pink Frisbee in her mouth. And people love that. It's just amazing how many friends I've made because of her and her Frisbee. But remember, it's about you getting your mind free from all this stuff. Now, by the way, when you walk, don't do this. This is this is a what not to do. Uh, don't don't just substitute, you know, one place for another and keep the screen in front of your face. Because part of what we need to do is get off these screens, right? Whether it's your phone or the computer or the TV set or whatever that's bombarding us right now with all sorts of horrible news. I mean, the news is there. We need to stay informed, but we can take a breather, okay? That's point number one. And I really want to emphasize that. Don't let that drop out of your repertoire. And there's more to that than meets the eye. And there's a lot to be said about it, which is why I wrote a whole chapter about it. Okay. Inspiration. I am constantly being inspired by other people. I read a lot of books. I'm usually reading two or three at a time. And I especially get inspired in the morning, the first thing in the morning. I don't dive into the world. I actually put a little point there where I get focused on what's really inspirational to me, you know, whether it's a point of philosophy or just learning something new. This is a good, you know, I'm not just saying this because I wrote this book, but this is a good source of inspiration. And it's not just about me. You know, there's a dozen really creative people that I interviewed who are in this book, people like Chris Burkhardt. And if you follow his Instagram, you know, this guy is amazing. Well, I've been following Chris for over 10 years. I interviewed him, I think in 2009, you know, obviously before Instagram. And he was a phenomenon then, and he still is. And he has, you know, some really good things to say. I'm going to read you this one little quote, just so you kind of get a taste of this. Chris Burkhardt. So I interviewed these guys and I asked him a bunch of questions about creativity. And, and this one was, what was the biggest barrier you had to overcoming that to make it happen? Which the barrier was the barriers of overcoming that he had to, to uh, get past, you know, in order to be the creative that he is today. He said the big one was just mainly dealing with my own self-worth and self-validation. When you submit your work and you never have any type of positive feedback, it can really be challenging. You guys know what that's like, right? That's really a hard thing to do. I think the first and biggest struggle people have to deal with is self-worth. You have to come to my work is valuable. That's a conclusion you have to come to on your own. And that's a really hard one to just figure out. Okay, so that's true. You got to figure out your value. It sort of boils down to what Socrates said and what Camille Seaman said, who's in my book also, is the first thing about being a creative or being a human being is know thyself. That was the message from Socrates 2,400 years ago. It's a good message. Okay, get inspired every day. Start your day off with inspiration. I, I start off with my trusty coffee cup from Big Sur. I'm not the only YouTuber that drinks coffee, by the way. Um, and then another thing I recommend is your notebook. Notebooks. I have dozens of notebooks, and I'm always writing stuff down. So after I get inspired... Whatever floats to the surface, whatever those mental flashes are, whatever it is, I take a moment and write them down every day. You know, I may not even go back and read these things. Often I do, but it doesn't really matter. There's something about putting it on paper. It's the feel, the touch. It's that you put energy into it. You're not just absorbing it. You're now putting it back. And I take notes of things that I want to talk to people about or I want to put into my own life and things I've learned. So I recommend you get a handy notebook and use it every day. So those are like, you know, those are three little points. They're not really very little. They're actually big walks, 
inspiration notebook, start your day off that way. You know, I heard an interview with Tim Ferriss. If you're not familiar with him, he's mega huge. Uh, inspiration, how to, he dives into things and figures them out, basically. Uh, he wrote the four hour work week and the four hour body. Anyway, pretty amazing guy. He was interviewing Chase Jarvis and they were talking. I'd already written this in my book, but they were talking about what Tim had found in the really amazing people he interviewed. He interviewed a whole set of people was that they did those two things every day. They did something inspiring and they journaled or wrote in their notebook. Okay. Good points. You'll find that's a, uh, those are common points of people who are really creative and better to load your life up with creativity than with, with a bunch of bad news. Okay. That'll help you handle the bad news too. The next thing is advancing your craft. Okay. So we've got to constantly overcome the fact right now that things are hard and things are, it's, it's not good news. And it's, if you're a prof professional photographer, it's definitely not good news. Like me, you've probably had uh, your shoots delayed at, at best, maybe even canceled. That's really disheartening. You know, I, I've heard people say, you know, I have my whole schedule for March and April just disappear overnight. Well, I've had the same thing. I will eventually do those shoots. They're not canceled, but they're postponed, right? That's not so easy. So the thing to do is put your attention on things that are going to fortify you creatively and artistically, and that means learning your craft. Okay, I've written books to do that. So this book I wrote because I wanted it to be, this is Advancing Your Photography, I wanted it to be a complete handbook and a photography, something you could carry around with you that covers all bases. In here, I also interviewed, you know, these are a result of my many interviews on YouTube, distilled and into bite-sized pieces that you can easily access. But I think even more important than that is why I wrote this book, Create, was because, you know, being a creative isn't the easiest job, as, as you heard Burkhardt say, because you're up against negativity. You're up against, am I doing the right thing? Why am I even bothering to do this? And don't think you're, you know, whatever those thoughts are, we've all had them as creatives. And the thing is, we've got to counteract them. We've got to do something. And part of it is just understanding what the creative process is, which is what I really tried to do here. And the creative process is like the cycle of photography. There are five steps to it. The first step and the most important step is visualization. There's a lot to this, but it basically means seeing in your mind's eye what it is you want to create, whether it's a photograph or writing or even your own career. Where are you going with your craft? What is it you really want to accomplish? Your own goals in life. So it can be a little bite-sized thing, like what photograph do I want to take right now? Or it can be a big thing, like where do I want to go with all this stuff I'm doing? And I poured all this energy into it. Am I going down the right road? Is there something better I should be doing? Okay, we've got to sort all that stuff out. And that's really important. So that's all part of your vision, your visualization. The next thing is knowing your equipment, your craft, your tools, knowing your camera, lighting, right? And whatever media you're working with, if you're a video, you got to know audio and all these other things, but you got to know your tools. Okay. Then you got to work your craft or get out there and shoot. Very simple. And that's capturing with a camera. And that includes lighting and composition what it is you're going to capture. So you got to do it. You know, if you're just working on the camera part all the time, you know, I, I see too many people get stuck and geeked them, you know, camera is a tool. See all these cameras behind me? I mean, those are cool cameras, right? I've used them all one way or another. The only one I didn't use, haven't used, I don't know that I've ever actually shot with an Instagram, Instagram, Instamatic, but I have, Use this, this 
is my first 35 millimeter camera ever. I graduated from, this is a box camera, which has no control whatsoever. You just point and shoot. To this camera was a big breakthrough. It's called an Argus C3. It uses 35 millimeter film. And for the first time, I could focus, I could change the shutter speed, and I could change the aperture. Whoa, that was like a miracle that I could change those things. I mean, look at it, guys. Going from this to this was a huge jump. Uh, this is my first eight millimeter film <laughs> camera. I used to take a lot, made a lot of movies when I was a kid with this camera. It was pretty cool. My dad bought a Polaroid. This is the <laughs> modern day version of a cell phone. Okay, because you had an instant, you had an instant picture, and that was the modern day thing. It was pretty cool. This still works, by the way. This is an iPhone one. This was the breakthrough right here. And um, I'm gonna. Somebody's sending me a message, and it's probably about this. Um, no, okay, well, all right, we're still good. This is the classic of all time. I took many photographs with this. This is a Roloflex twin lens. You focus with the upper lens, and you compose with it, and you actually capture with this lens. It's kind of amazing. Seems kind of like redundant but it's actually very cool. Okay, who knows what this is? <laughs> this is a Leica M2, M2. When I was in art school, San Francisco Art Institute, this was the camera you had to shoot with. And I actually talked to Annie Leibovitz about this many years later. We all shot with the Leica M2, why? Because our mentor, Henri Cartier-Bresson used this camera. Because he used it, we were gonna use it. Single lens, this is a 50 millimeter, actually really mostly shot with a 35 millimeter lens and that was it. So this is just a, a small array of cameras that I've used, but these are just tools. I could go out today with any one of these and be a happy photographer. I don't have to have the latest model. I do, I'm a geek too, you know, to some degree. I like new equipment, but don't get stuck in it. Remember, it's only one fifth of this cycle, which is knowing your tools. Then you get out and capture, then you edit. We gotta know our editing software. I use Lightroom. You can use anything that works for you. It doesn't really matter. Whatever it is that you're comfortable with, you gotta edit, right? Because generally speaking, I mean, I, how many times do you get a, capture that comes right out and you're happy with it, whether it's your iPhone or whatever. I'm always doing a some, you know, I'm usually adjusting the blacks, the white point. I want to, I definitely want a definite black and I want a definite white. I want that, uh, you know, range, dynamic range. I'll usually adjust the highlights. I might adjust the, uh, what, you know, there's a bunch of different things, obviously, but you're going to move those sliders around until it looks the way you had visualized it and your vision comes back into this when you're editing. Okay, then the last thing is you get it out to the world. And this is really important. If these photographs just remain on your phone or remain on your computer, it's not very satisfying. You wanna put them out into the world. And there's many ways to do that besides posting on social media. I really recommend prints. And you hear Dan Milner on our channel, He's always talking about that. I'm a huge believer. Get your best work printed. Put it into a book. You know, you can get blurb, you can make blurb books. They're awesome. You can, there's a lot, there's other software besides blurb, but Bay Photo does an incredible job with, with your basic prints and they'll make cards. They'll make books. They're really awesome. I love those guys. Check them out. But you want to get your work out to the world. And there's a lot of ways to do that. I talk about it both in Create, because it's part of the creative process, and in Advancing Your Photography. Both of those are really important, no matter what you're creating, whatever you're working with. So I want to point out something. The first most important part of it is visualization, because it interacts with all the others. You visualize, then you decide what equipment you're going to use. What camera am I going to shoot with? 
you know, if I'm going out and I'm going to shoot, shoot, you know, surf photography, I'm going to take a GoPro, obviously. If I'm, um, you know, going to shoot drone shots, right? I want to, you know, this incredible high angle shot of the Carmel River, and I want to get the S curve and capture it as an, you know, as a still photo. Great, drones are perfect for that. So whatever it is you visualize, you're going to use that equipment. Then you go out and capture it. You got to get out there and do that every day. You got to work your craft every day. Come back and edit. Don't mix editing, by the way, with these other stages. This is where that self-criticism and all that kicks in. Before you even started, you know, you start editing yourself. Bad idea. Don't do that. It's just if you've done that, just, just stop doing it. Because editing is its own stage right here at stage four here. Okay? And then you get your work out to the world. Now, I want to point out something. If visualization occupies the biggest part of that, these other four are less than a fifth of the whole process. In other words, don't spend more than one fifth of your energy on your equipment. The whole world goes quiet. <laughs> okay, because what are we bombarded with in this commercial world? You got to have this new piece of equipment. You got to get this new update. You got to do this. You got to do that. And really, guys, the stuff that we need to work with has been there for 100 years. Okay, I'm not saying I, these are not my everyday cameras. I do shoot digital. I shoot mirrorless. It's easier, but I could go back to these if I wanted to. And the same thing is true with editing. Don't make that your, your obsession with software more than one-fifth of this process. Balance it out. Visualization capture, I'm sorry, visualization, knowing your equipment, capture, editing, sharing your work out in the world. Those are the five stages. They work together interactively, really super important. Okay, those are things that if you study every day and you work on them every day, bingo, you're, you're going to keep advancing your photography. I'm a little concerned why I'm not getting any messages through. Give me one second here. Let me see if if there's something I was supposed to click on, for some reason, let's just check check this out here. Um, I'm not seeing the messages. No, you guys are sending them maybe. So let's just see if I can figure this out. Um, you guys are seeing the stream. We are public. I'm seeing likes, but what I'm not seeing is your messages. Somebody's saying, okay. So I guess, Jared, you can forward them over to me. I don't know, for some reason, they're not showing up on my screen. Let's just see why that is. Uh, yeah, for some reason, the questions are not coming through. Somebody did ask a question. Um, kindly please explain more in detail. Okay, well, I'll, you know, I will continue to be doing this uh, like four or five times a week, and I will get into more detail. Today's kind of a warm up session. So if you stick with me, and there's specific things you want to hear about, I will definitely, I guarantee you all definitely just take those things and break them down even more. Okay, so what's, uh, after, you've, after you've spent your energy on improving your vision and your outlook, here's another thing. One way to improve your visualization is to look at art. You've heard me say that. You've heard Bob Holmes say that. Joey L, go to museums, get inspired. We can't really go to museums right now, but we can get books. You probably have some in your own library. Your library may be closed, so that may be a limitation. My library is closed, but you can still order stuff online and they will place it in a, there's a, a place where you can actually go retrieve those books. I don't know where, you, wherever you are may be really different, but look in your own library. You can go online to do this. It's not the preferred thing. It's better to, to 
to actually look at books. It's better to look at art on the wall if you if you possibly can. But the other thing that's really good in terms of inspiration for me is music inspires me no end. But I also look at documentaries. I love to see, you know, what's going on and how those documentaries are made and what's the story. There's one I just rewatched. I've probably seen three times. It's called Sound City. I think it's on Netflix or, or Prime. I can't remember which one. But it was made by Dave Grohl, who started the Foo Fighters. He was in Nirvana. Unbelievably talented guy. Unbelievably talented. And he's the director of this documentary. Who knew, right, that this guy could do this? It's a fantastic film. I really recommend it. Look at it on many different levels. And I usually do this when I watch film anyway. You look at it for just the story. Then you look at it for artistically how he shot this, you know, how he wove in music and, you know, visuals from maybe 30 years ago with current film and interviews. And it's, it's a masterpiece. But one of the things that, that he asked towards the end of this film, he asked all these different musicians that he'd been interviewing one question, what does feel mean in music and feel actually to a musician. And if there's musicians out there, they will confirm this. I actually had to learn this because I wasn't familiar with this term. When you feel the music, you're so absorbed in the music that you feel like it has become part of you, right? You know what I mean. You're, you're so in touch. That's what feel means. You know, we do that as photographers. You know, you go into an environment and you really feel it or you're shooting portraits and you're connected to the person that you're photographing. You, you really feel that connection, feel. And it has to do with kind of where we start out this discussion about walking and looking and, you know, it's connecting. It's about being connected. And that's another point I wanna make that even though we have social distancing and we have to stay in our homes, it doesn't mean we can't remain connected and we can certainly feel. So do your inspiration work, books uh, on art, any kind of art, reading books. I get inspired when I read authors that are like, whoa, John Steinbeck inspires me. I get inspired by most authors I read. Many, I should say, not most. Um, make sure you're, you're putting energy into that. And stay, let's stay connected as a community. So I have a hashtag, hashtag AYP club. You can put that on Instagram and follow other members of this community and leave your photographs, but your ideas as well. I have a hashtag for this book also, which is create hacks. And one of the things I actually asked for, I think in both of these, is take a picture of your notebooks and put them in there, you know? Uh, you can take the less personal stuff, you know, make you know, make that uh, the less personal things, put a photograph there. Talk about what you're, what you're thinking about, what you're examining, your experiences. It's gonna help us all. And let's help each other out. Uh, if you want to be critiqued and you're on the hashtag AYP club, you can just say, hey, guys, would you please critique my photograph? Get some feedback. And I do have uh, an explanation in advancing your photography how to do a correct critique. It's really two things. First, try to find, you know, the most positive thing you can. I, I mean, look, I, like you, I've seen photographs where I go, whoa, okay, what? <laughs> where do I start? I don't want to knock this person down, but this needs, they need some help with this photograph. So I try to find something positive in it. You know, you really capture those colors well. And then I give them one reference point of something I feel needs to be improved. And it's the most, kind of try to find the most important thing that they should improve. And it could be like, I don't see the center of interest here. I see a cat over here. I see a tree over here. I'm not sure where you want me to look. So either... 
you know, move in close on the cat so I can see that you want me to, this is a story about a cat. You want me to see that cat or move in on the tree, but don't split my attention into these two different things. Okay. I mean, that's good advice, right? So go out and shoot another photograph after you get it. It doesn't mean you're not knocking your, your value. It's just, this is what we, we all need, like critiquing. So that's a way to do a positive cr critique. Find the positive and find one thing that you think they should improve. When I look at critiques, I get critiqued on my written work all the time. So I read it and I usually will, okay, so I send my books out to people beta reading, and I, which means that they read it before we publish it. And I look for their feedback. And if they say, well, here's a good example. Uh, I was talking about negatives, you know, film negatives, right? And they were not a photographer. They said, what, what's a negative? Oh, you know, to me, that's like, I know what a negative is. It's like saying, what's coffee? By the way, let me have a sip. But they grew up in the digital world. They didn't know what a negative was. So I, I went, oh, okay, that's, that's a good point. I put a picture of a negative. I put a positive and a negative by, beside each other so they could see. I'm a little bummed I can't see your guys' comments, but I don't know why that is. We'll fix it for the next one. So um, thank you. I'm going to just thank you for whatever you've been saying. So that's really important to stay connected on our AYP community, stay connected together. Um, if... Jared wants to pass along to me some questions, then I can answer a couple of questions before we go. Okay, somebody asked, can I go, hang on a sec. Thank you, Jared, for sending these along. You know, you should kind of expect your first time out. Somebody said, um, can I go with photography instead of getting a job? Of course, photography is a job. And it's work like anything else, you know, writing is a job. And the photographers I know are hard at work. I mean, they're working, 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 working. So that's the difference between being an amateur and being a pro is you know, the pro has to come back with the goods. Bob Holmes has talked about this. You don't have the luxury of not having, you got to return. Your client wants those photographs. So just if you're working your way up to that, work up to it. You know, don't just jump one day. Okay, I'm a pro photographer. I would say work into it. Keep your day job. And find the kind of photography that you do that there's a market for. By the way, I learn a lot from doing commercial work, and Ansel Adams said this as well. He did a lot of commercial work that you'll never see. Like, for instance, for the Chevron, you know, gas company, of their, their oil tanks and things, you're never going to see that. That was in one of their brochures, but it was an Ansel Adams photograph. And one of the things that he said was that those commercial projects challenged him because he went into environments and he photographed things that he wouldn't have done on his own. Because, you know, look, he's a natural photographer, landscapes, Yosemite, and that sort of thing. He's not going to normally take pictures of an oil tank, but he made those oil tanks look beautiful. And I find that with my commercial work, which is primarily video production, I enjoy doing it because it puts me into an environment I wouldn't normally be shooting. And there's always a challenge that you have to overcome. And those are really good learning experiences. So work your way. I was thinking we could do a, you know, a specific show on getting work, being a commercial photographer. You guys can let me know. I'll, I'll, I will get these comments, I'm sure, sooner or later. But, um, but you know, listen, do it step by step. Don't just jump off one day. Um, and the other one is I have doubts if I can make a career with my dreams. Don't, don't doubt that. Whatever it is, your career should be your dream. I mean, it really should be. 
And you can do that again, have your day job, build your career. One of the guys that I interviewed in here, Aaron Cairo, um, here he is. He is a skateboarder. He's a good friend of mine. My son worked with him. They built their YouTube channel from nothing to over, I think, 4.6 million subscribers. And by the way, if you haven't subscribed yet, will you please do so and hit the bell? But Aaron talked about his process of going from a valet, parking cars as a valet, to, you know, what it took him to become a major YouTuber. And he did it step by step. And that's the way you should approach this. But don't lose sight of your dream no matter what. This is the most important thing. As long as you have dreams, you're alive. Only, you know, inanimate objects, this cup has no dream. The only thing that can happen to it is what I put into it. And you're the one that puts life into your life. You're the one that puts your dreams there. You have goals. This is all part of visualization where we started out. Keep your vision there. Do things that will increase your vision and expand it. That's really important. So, Jared, if there are any others, pass them along to me now, or I'm going to start to wrap up here in a minute. So I've got some news for you guys. Oh, here we go. From Sharon. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, in this day and age, it's a perfect time to pursue your dreams. See what happens when you don't. Life passes by because of a stupid bat virus. Boy, is that true. Thank you, Sharon. Let's not let a virus derail us. Let's use it as a springboard. And I talked about that in my last video. You know, I actually grew up during the Cold War, which is really a horrible time because as children, we were basically told that we're, we had to prepare for the worst thing that could possibly happen, which is nuclear war. That's not great to live that way as a kid. You know, that's not a good environment. And many of us springboarded off of that. You saw this massive culture in the 60s. No matter what you heard about it, it was actually a very, very creative time. Music was just exploding filmmaking, writing, it was photography. That's where my photography just, you know, because we were faced with annihilation. You can either succumb to that and give up, or you can go the opposite direction, use it as a springboard and really decide to master your creativity, which is what I did. Okay, you guys, a couple of newsy items tomorrow. At 10 a.m. Pacific time, Dan Milner, we're releasing a new little mini documentary. It's so cool. It is so cool. It's about his first trip, 1995. Watch it. It's short. It's super punchy. Just like Dan Milner, it's super cool. But guess what? Sunday at 10 a.m., I'm going to interview Dan. If I can make all the technology work, bear with me. Join us for that. And I want you guys to come along with me. I'm going to actually try to do many of these. I'm not going to commit yet to one a day, but I'm going to try to do that. And if you do something for me, which is make sure you subscribe now and bring along at least one other person, that means every time we do one of these things, we'll double. And we'll keep doubling and doubling and doubling. And we can become a huge creative force and a huge creative community. I believe what we're talking about is really the whole essence of photography. As I've said, you can use any one of these cameras, mirror, I got them all, okay? I've got large format, medium format, mirrorless, DSLRs, film cameras. Hey, I could be blindfolded and just pick one of them and you're gonna go out and get a good photograph, okay? But it's the other ingredients that make it a great photograph. Ansel Adams said the whole key to photography lies very clearly with your ability to visualize. Okay, think about that until we meet up again. Subscribe. Did I already say that? I might have. Okay. <laughs>
Share this with your friends. Invite your friends to the next one. Like the video. Leave your comments in the video itself. And until next time, Sunday, well, we'll see you tomorrow on Dan's video. Remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Well, I love you guys. Boom. I'm going to be here for a second because I got to turn it off. Cheers. Take care. Do all the things I talked about. See you soon.